hey, I'm making this video. I'm, I'm assuming it's only gonna help like three people, but honestly, if there was a video out there like this for me, it would've been super helpful and it would've saved me a bunch of time. So I figured, why not give back if I'm, if I'm doing it anyway? Let me show you how it needs to be done. Specifically because places, as far as I can tell, do not reproduce the single speed wiper switch. So what I'm gonna show you in this is what a single speed wiper motor looks like. So you can see the difference between a single or a dual speed wiper. Um, I'm gonna show you the reproduction single speed switch with the option for the washer. Don't worry if you don't have a washer, you should still be able to hook this up. Um, but this is the single speed, not the dual. So let's just preface that right out of the way. And how to take a, a new switch which has more connections than your old wires. That's the confusing part, right? You're like, I've got five wires, but I got seven places to put them. What do I do? I think I'm gonna be able to show you how to do that, how the switch works. Um, so let's dive in. I'll show you the single speed wiper first. Please pardon my heater, it's 30 degrees in the garage. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go from there. Okay, so if we hop up in the car um, and look up underneath the dash, this is your wiper motor right here. The single speed will have three male kind of spade connectors that you would put a female plug into. If you have the two speed, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a pigtail that comes off the four wires. This is only three. So that is, as far as I can tell, a great way to determine whether you have a single speed or a, uh, or a dual speed. So, um, Let's get that out of the way. Now let me show you the switch. Okay guys, here's what they don't make anymore. Um, so basically this is the old switch over here on my left and you can kind of see the problem. I did not try to take this apart. It just came apart. So it's broken. I try to put it back together and I, I kind of got it back together, but when it popped apart, a bunch of pieces went flying and you know, it was kind of like, there's no schematics for it, right? So you're, you're feeling it. I got it back together, but basically these kind of tangs right here are meant to grab this plastic and it just didn't, didn't work anymore. So here's your old style, okay? We've got five connections. Hopefully you guys can see that, right? One, two, three, four, five. That's your old switch. Here is the original wiring harness. So you've got your four that connect down here you've got this little extra duder up here. I try my best to go from the colors of wires that I have to try and make this match. Um, but uh, you know, who knows, I may not be able to, but we're gonna try our best to at least have similar colors. So that in the future, I'm trying to you know troubleshoot this, I can figure it out. So that's, that is the old original harness. And here is the new switch, okay? Now, right off the bat, what you can tell with this new switch is if you count, you've got seven connections, right? Seven connections. The other one had five, a single speed wiper motor only needs five. Um, these other two are for, and I'll show you exactly which ones, are for um, the washer. Here's the cheat, I think. Um, if you look at the switch, see this little line right here? Like these two, these two little tabs? These two are the extras. So if you just look at this switch and go, you know what, forget about the ones on the other side of the tab, those are the five you need. And then from there, that helps narrow it down. And there are a couple diagrams, which I think based on the angle of these like little male spade connectors, um, we can figure out uh, how they go together. So first things first, I'll throw the time-lapse on. I'm gonna fix this with new wiring. Um, and then you will need to reuse some stuff when you buy a switch. It doesn't come with the little stuff that goes on your dash. So like this piece, this piece, you know, some of these pieces, that's internal to the switch, but some of these pieces you'll need to retain. So I'll throw the time-lapse on, we'll cut this and we'll start making new. Okay, slight change of plan. Um, I really wanted to reuse this, but as I started to look in there deeper, I'm starting to see some signs of corrosion, which, you know, I, I could probably get in there with a little piece of sandpaper and clean that off, but any sort of corrosion is gonna lead to resistance. Resistance is gonna lead to higher amp draw, which in turn is heat. Heat is obviously the enemy. If you were to melt any of these things, ground something out, if it's not properly grounded, that's how you have a fire. So when I really start to look at this, there's definitely some signs of distress, right? These things have seen some heat, okay? Look at the color of this, of this blue and look as I get closer. See how it turns kind of like a lightish green? Now, this is underneath the dash. This isn't UV, this isn't anything else. This, I think, is heat. So while I like the idea that these are all three in a molded plug, I think what I'm gonna do 
is I'm just gonna use spade connectors and I'm gonna make an entirely new harness. I would have to use spade connectors on the other side because as far as I can tell, I mean, this is not gonna obviously plug into this. Um, there may be a company out there that sells these. They're probably 50, 60 bucks. So if you're comfortable with your wiring, I think for the cost of, you know, I've got the spade connectors already. I've got good wire that came with the American Auto Wire harness. Certainly some extra in there, right? Hey, look, orange and blue, I needed that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a whole new one myself. Okay, so when you look at the switch in this orientation, notice the two little tabs that I indicated earlier are for extras that we're not gonna use. When you hold it in this orientation, um, using kind of the stock wire color codes, this is the orientation that it would go. Okay, so the white is your power, and then these next three, the orange, the blue, and the black, are going to go to the other side of your switch in the same orientation that they plug in on the switch. Now disregard the tracer, but still blue, black, orange, okay? Now you're probably asking yourself, but wait, there's one extra wire on here. That is the ground, so, or what I believe to be the ground. So on this harness right here, see how this is doubled up? They're connecting them that way. Well, that is because on the original switch, which I've lost, okay, you've got these over here, but on this switch, you've got an extra prong for it. So what I'm gonna do is that extra prong right there, I'm gonna make it out of a green wire so I don't have two blacks, and this is gonna be um, the ground. Okay, getting close to the moment of truth. So this, the stock connection is like a bullet style connector. Um, not my favorite. I had these leftover weather packs from a previous job. I had a single like right in front of me and that was like fate telling me to use that instead. So I cut off on inside the car and installed weather packs on both sides. A little bulkier and you don't really need weather pack underneath the dash, but I just feel like when you press them together, you get that positive click so you know what's in. So um, what I'm gonna do is now that I've got it all, you know, hooked up, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just like hang it loose in the car and you know throw that on the ground plug that in plug these into the switch um, into the wiper motor throw a battery on it and just see if the wipers work well i almost forgot uh went back under there when i was tidying everything up and i did notice that there uh, looks like a spade connector coming off of the motor for a ground so i had some leftover wires i highly recommend if you're going to do this or any kind of wiring that you get the type of connectors where you get a double crimp um, one side crimps the insulation, the other side crimps the conductor, um, and I had some leftover covers. So this slides on, clicks into place, so nothing can, even though this is a ground, nothing can touch anything else. Um, yeah, so I'll get it underneath the car, cut it to length, put a little ring term on the other side, grind off some paint, ground it out, and now that I've got everything in there, I'll do a final test. Okay, she's all wired up. I mean, obviously temporarily. Um, got her plug that over here just plugged in so we'll uh we'll give her a little test hit here hopefully we don't let the magic smoke out of the box well i'm not sure if uh this requires keys on so <laughs> well hopefully it needs power in order to work uh. hey Whoa, look, it works. Okay. Cool thing too is the last time when I would shut it off, it wouldn't go back to the bottom. But now I've got my single speed wipers, click them off. They always go back. Watch, I'll click them off right there. Hey, they go all the way back. 
Man, I am just like the smartest person. Well, cool. It works. Okay, so I'm going to pull the switch out of the car. I disconnected the battery. A um, couple things I learned. That circuit doesn't receive power in the accessory position, just in the on position. I didn't start the car. Um, hopefully that means it still has power in the run position, but uh, I'm assuming it does. So I'm going to basically take the harness out, um, maybe take a little bit of electrical tape and just wipe it around. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't decided yet, but I want to route it better and get everything right. And then I've got to take all the components that came with the original switch right here, put them in. Here's the final install. Um, I got the switch in there. So you, you do have to get from your old switch, or if you don't have one, the knob, um, this little kind of indicator for wipers. Um, there's like a little screw kind of nut sort of thing back here and then a little spacer. So those you gotta swap over. It is kind of tricky to get this thing tight, but get it all in there tight. Um, you saw I use a little bit of insulation. I didn't wind up using any electrical tape because that's such a sticky and can get messy, but I routed everything nice and out of the way. Um, if we come back up under here, you can see where the wires plug in and I've got my ground run and everything is nice and good and it all works uh, great. So. That is the finished product. The last thing I'll say is this does have the functionality that if you pull out on it, if you were to wire it up, you could get a washer, you know, to run off of this as well. So you get little squirters on your windshield. But um, I don't have that hooked up, but this switch does give you that functionality. Well, that about wraps this video up. Um, hopefully in about 10 minutes, you were able to figure out how to wire a wiper motor from scratch. I'm sure this would apply to other wipers as well. But if you have an older Mustang or a Comet or a Falcon or something like this, a Galaxy even, and you just got the single speed motor and you bought a reproduction switch and it's got too many terminals, there's how you do it. So I hope you guys uh, found it interesting and uh, useful. And I do a ton of stuff like this on the channel. So if you enjoyed this video, check it out. I got a ton more stuff. I've got old truck stuff, old car stuff, all kinds of stuff. Um, so check me out, uh, like, and subscribe. Uh, my name is Truck and Roll. This is my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.